Well, hello. We're here again. I'm going to show you that super router table. The super router table. You heard me right. There is nothing out there in the market that compares to the super router table. This one. It's not because of the top, it's not because of the fence, but everything has got to do with the lift. There is nothing in the market that compares to this lift. Everything is electronic. The lift itself is made out of plywood, DIY. It's got four, not two, four super duty door slides one on each corner and it's a long so you don't have to reach underneath the table for any reason not to change the beats not to adjust the height any reason you can even change the motor from the top the uh, router motor I mean not the elevator motor uh, we had to get those uh, terms perfect but these will do things that you only dream fast efficient and safe they are so safe even my 10 year old grandson can use it and I wouldn't be afraid after I teach him how Everything is adjustable. The uh, motor that causes to go up and down is adjustable. Adjust it how fast or how slow you can move the router up and down. It has a digital readout and see how high it is. It's got a stop, automatic stop. You can set it the maximum high and you can do multiple passes you know going up a little bit in increments because you don't want to have sometimes you don't want to hug a bunch of wood because it will stall your motor or it'll burn it or burn the wood or something so you can lift it up in increments and you don't you can't be afraid of going too far because once you set that stop that's all you need now also you can set the speed of the router motor from the front panel you have an indicator the indicator uh, lights that'll tell you when you reach the maximum height according to your adjustment you have indicator light to see when it's moving up or down you have a jolt switch in the front of the panel to let you do it by the panel. But most of the operation you do with a foot switch, a foot pedal. You press the foot pedal, it'll go up. You press it the other way, it'll go down. You don't have to release. You work. You can use both hands and go up on the fly or go down on the fly. You finish the cut, you bring the bit down. Excellent. Tell me, how many table routers that you know that you can adjust the speed of the router motor from the front of the lift without reaching underneath? I don't know anybody that has that. How many table routers that you know that you can adjust the height of the router with your foot? or with a switch how many riders you know you can set the maximum high and start doing passes till you reach the maximum high and you don't have to be afraid you're going to go too high that's what I'm talking about now I have a router out here a table and I have a nice fence that I copied from Steve Ramsey 
did Ronnie come up with his with his pens? Excellent. So why invent the wheel if somebody already invented it? Thank you, Steve. I like your design for the fence. Split fence in the bottom. You got the top out here. Although Steve put a T, a T from a truck out here, and I also. I also took advantage of here the space I had and I put also a mileage to hold on to those other stuff so I can use the the feather boards and the block and the on the table saw too. So that way it's interchangeable. I use a, a crank drop plate right here, just like Steve did. And uh, the rest of it is it came out of my head. So please watch the video and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Hello. You can see here I started to mount the uh, heavy duty slides, the drawer slides, into the dados that I cut on those woods. Now, you can see I started making the, uh, the carriage and where the motor goes, I I uh, stacked four pieces of plywood and uh, laminated together. Here I'm cutting in the uh, lathe the bore where the uh, router motor will fit to uh, cut plywood like that is it's not that easy it's very messy because it won't cut like solid wood and so little little tiny splinters flying everywhere See how the motor fits snug into the new board that I cut. The uh, sides are already in the way. The problem with that, it had to be perfectly aligned, it had to be perfectly parallel to each other. Here's an attempt to make them parallel by using a side, temporary side pieces. Here the carriage is taking shape. You can see the uh, it's mostly put together. I lift into the vertical position to try make sure everything is is loose and uh, and it won't bind. You can see I already start making the frame from the top and bottom that will hold everything together. Cut the mortises on the side pieces. And here you can see it's been all put together already. Now I use a coupling nut and I welded a one of those cheap wrenches that come with the die grinders and some of the tools. I welded it to the coupling nut and uh, I fit the coupling nut through the bottom of the lift of the plywood and I put a screw from keeping from the nut from turning. And then I cut a date also on a, another piece of plywood and sandwich the wrench between the two pieces. That'll keep it from turning and, and uh, I put a bushing out there to guide the rod, the threaded rod. I guide it and uh, I put, I press a bushing and I glue it. Got some CF glue. Here is uh, the coupling, the motor has a spline coupler. So I had to use a piece of a uh, plumbing pipe reducer and I dr dr drill it and I thread it and I put three bolts that will engage its spline. 
not to tighten on the spline but it will engage the spline uh, here is uh, I cut the heads off and flush them so they won't hang up with anything outside and those three little pieces of bolt they don't engage the spline on the on the motor you can see the motor right here is already being mounted on the bottom part of the, the lift with uh, used uh, some insert on the plywood here you can see that they engage the, the thread rod with an oversized hole and I drill in a tap on the little coupling out there so the bolt doesn't tight on the rod but it'll be loose in case of it's a little misalignment uh, it had chance to move around and won't bind you can see here the coupling is between this sandwich between those two but pieces of plywood in the bottom here I had it on the bench to test the motor make sure everything was going up and down before I mounted on the table here I, melt, I build a frame that will be bolted on top of one of those sears uh, uh, portable benches is bolted for the frame is bolted from the bottom into that table then uh, I build the sides, I build a box on the sides to make it the height that I prefer. I don't like to bend too much and so I lift it to the height I prefer. I put a couple of cleats inside that box and I drop the lift into it. Those cleats will hold it in place. You can, you can see it fits like a glove. Now, uh, this is a picture I took from a few steps backwards, and you can see it. It's protrudes out of the bottom, but that's got a reason for uh, this is a correct insert plate that I want to make sure everything uh, will fit after it's done. I'm working on the tabletop uh, here, and uh, I'll be ready to, to mount the tabletop to the table. I mounted the uh, here you can see and I mounted on the rear with some hinges so I can lift it and service it whatever I need to uh, I put some uh, melamine out here and I pressed it down as much as I could all different sizes so I have to leave it overnight till the glue dries and I said I hear when the melamine installed and everything I started the router motor and I started to lift it a little bit with a three quarter bit through the table there we go now I know exactly where the uh, bit will come out through the table we could have measured but this is more exact here I'm uh, centering the plate and squaring it and ready to cut it I marked it square and cut it so that way I know exactly where to cut here is a I, I started to cut it with a jigsaw and uh, tuning the uh, hole to make sure the plate will feel snug with a sander and uh, in another drop sa dry, uh, drum sander and, uh, and a dr drill motor here you can see that the plate is already installed and drop perfectly good I started to work on the uh, control panel now everything is it started to work on the electrical and the control panel and uh, you started all the components that will be on the control panel here you can see it started the components some relays switches lights and some connector bars also working on the pedal I cut the 
components and bolted the components on the pedal. Here's the pedal already wired up. And you can see it's got four micro switches because I couldn't get one micro switch at double throw. Here's the pedal already assembled with top and everything. Here's the pedal with paint colors to identify what is what. Here are the limit switches. The bottom one is fixed, the top one is adjustable depending on how high you want the bit to go. So that way you can set it and uh, you can repeat the cut every time or just one time, doesn't matter. Here's a simple circuit for the uh, motor, the will uh, lift motor. Here's a very, uh, the simple ones you can get because there are some people that do not have enough skills to follow a more complex diagram. Here's a little diagram, a little bit more sophisticated. You can see it had the uh, some limit switches and uh, switch by hand, uh, a hand switch to go up and down. No pedal in this one. This one, it has everything that I had on mine has the pedal, it's got the hand switch, it's got the indicator lights for the, uh, for the uh, stops and it has a uh, travel lights, it has everything except for the uh, variable speed on the motor. I didn't put it in on this one. This is the, the uh, router motor. I took the cover off and I removed the uh, the uh, knob that turns it faster and slower adjust the RPMs and then uh, I extended the connections to that switch so that it's not a switch it's a potentiometer I extended the wiring for that by soldering extensions on a on the three terminals it will hook up to the uh, to the potentiometer that was built into the router before. Here I put some shrink tubing and uh, put another shrink tubing on the outside that way is easier to to keep a uh, mechanical fortitude on the wire. Now, I cut a small notch where the wire will come out and I put the cover back on. And I remounted the uh, the router on the, on the router table. On the other end of that wire, I installed a potentiometer of the same value as the one I took out from the inside of the router. So that way I have now, this way, I have control over the router RPM without having to reach down there. And I mounted the potentiometer in the control panel with some shrink tubing to protect the wiring. Now you can see uh, here a PWM little board that I installed out there to control the speed of the lift motor. But since this one is only a 2 amp driver, I went and put a uh, uh, IGBT to control the motor by itself. There, there is a pointing to the JGBT. Uh, it's an isolated, ga uh, iso isolated gate bipolar transistor which is about 70 amps uh, and that's overkill to drive the, the little lift motor but that's all I had in my junk box so I used it.
you can see the board uh, here the control board the control panel if you are on full screen you can read the labels I put on the picture although the labels are not on the control panel I didn't have nothing to write it like that with I wish I did but on the panel itself are not they're not labeled so here is the uh, measuring that I purchase on eBay is they are not that expensive I was uh, the weekly is about 30 bucks on eBay and they wanted like 70 bucks in uh, woodcraft <laughs> this one was a little bit more it was like $35 delivered so the eye gauge and it's got a couple more little things I hear that I like they have preset that increment and so I decided to go with that one. I cut in the making the fence out there and cutting the the dados for the here we go. You can see this at uh, the top table. On the fence I have a split fence that I can open and close. I have the Craig drop plate insert uh, and I have two trucks a T-truck and a Midas truck same thing on the fence too and same thing I do it on the table why because that way I can use the T-truck for stop blocks and the Midas truck for the uh, for example for the uh, feather boards same thing I hear. I can use a T track for circle cutting jigs, for example, stop blocks, hold down uh, switches, any kind of uh, uh, at attachment I wanted to put on the table. So that way it gives me more liberty and attaching jigs and feather boards and whatnot. Uh, this uh, fence I copied from Steve Ramsey, uh, but I uh, added the uh, the second T uh, track, or uh, I think Steve Ramsey had a T track out here. I added a uh, Midas track. Okay, uh, this is almost a direct copy of Steve Ramsey's. Uh, uh, fence. Now the difference I uh, here, I even put the Craig uh, uh, insert plate. I put the control panel that I built is below. Now this is the control panel. What do I have here? I have the switch to turn on the router. This knob by here, what it does is adjust the speed of the router motor. How fast the how fast the bit will go. This is the light that reach the top uh, limit switch and the bottom limit switch. This is a jolt I can go up or down by hand. And this is sets the speed or how fast or fa uh, it will go up or down. This is a travel light up, travel light down, and the meter. It shows you how high relative to zero is your bit. And you can do presets. And you can measure your increments. And say you need an increment of uh, half an inch. You set your increment on half an inch depending on what you have. And that will show you when you reach the half an inch if you had a very slow motion. And this is a safety switch. You turn your router on and then you push anywhere. It will shut off. 
That's the control panel. Simple. Also, the table is built in such a way that you can lift it up and do whatever services that you need to do. If you look at that, see? You can lift the table up and you do whatever service needs to be done in there. And you put it back down and lock it. So when you're lifting the thing, if the whole table is, you lifting the, uh, the bit, the whole table won't lift up. It's, uh, now, let's go and try something practical. Now you can see the uh, the pedal down there. The blue, if you push on the blue side, it'll a little go will go up towards the sky. The blue. If you push on the red, the lift will go down towards the magma, towards the center of the earth, the fires. So, if I roll it up or U or D, it's more difficult to see it with a peripheral view when you try to concentrate on what you're doing. However, with the colors, it's immediately identified. Now, if you can see, I will turn the... Alright, and like I said before, this knob will adjust the speed of the router off the end. down anymore but it will let you go up now same thing with your foot pedal going up to a certain point it won't let you go down up anymore but it will let you go down now this switch right here it will let you change the speed for example going up very slowly you can go even slower you can go down slow or faster now tell me which commercial lift would do this Also, for example, now we can do this uh, here, we leave it in fractions, all right? We go up a little bit and we mark zero. We set it up. We have this beta here and that high, it will be zero. So, going up, you can tell it's changing, that's a 916, 
is protruding from the level of the plate. Keep going up. 15, 16. From the level of the plate to the tip of the bit. We don't find these features in any other lift unless we install it ourselves. This is an eye gauging uh, model and, uh, and it's not that expensive and I think it's a great thing. Now, for example, I want to lift I want to lift it to a maximum of what is it? 3564. So, in order to cut off, I move I'm going to move the top limit when this light barely comes on. So, I can go down and it's repeatable. I go up There you go, 3264, perfect. So you can repeat the same high using in conjunction. Your measurement tool and your height adjustment. That way, you don't need any other tool. You know those tools you put out here and you measure and you do it? That's fine. But this is already built in, you don't have to do any more. That's that. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anymore. It's built and it's done. You can do repeatable cuts. And you don't have to bring a here, cut a little bit, you know, shut off the machine. And if it's wide, you have to remove the, the, the work from the machine in order to put that crank and crank it again. This is done. You don't have to do anything. You just step on the pedal, go up a little bit more. If, if it's a uh, lot of wood you have to hog, you go little by little. Now this piece of wood is a piece of scrap. I don't know if it's... I go and try to cut a circle.
circle. Very smooth edges because when I went up, I went out little by little. I didn't hog all this when we just let it. It would have been totally uh, mangled. So there we go, folks. If you don't want to put something like that for the center of a circle, you can, of course, do it with a small pen instead of having this screw that I just improvised uh, here. But it does the trick. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the stop dados. You know, most of the time when you do a stop dado, you have to have the bit where you need it, and then you drop the work on top of the spinning bit, and you move it. Normally, you have a mark, or you have a stop block like this. I didn't invent those, you know, just <laughs> I take advantage. So, you move it. With this system, you don't have to be dangerous and drop your work on the spinning bit. You can start the rudder with the bit all the way down. And you can lift it a little bit. The operation is totally safety now. You don't have to get your hands off your work. You do a stop data dados like it was made on an industrial machine automatically. Machine it costs ha, this is thousands of dollars. So you can see how perfect it came out. And you don't have to preset the height and burn the wood and all the other things that you were forced to do before. And dangerous. To readjust the height, you have to stop the thing, take your hands out of it, crack it or crack it, whatever you have, system you had. Now I will tell you, I'm going to show you how to how are we going to round up this 2x4 and uh, with a 3 quarter round up bit but as you see we cannot do it all in one pass it might be too over taxing on the truck uh, on the motor or the bit itself so what we're going to do we're going to raise it till get a little bit of it. So I'm going to start it.
are fully engaged. I over overshot it, but that was my intention to show you. So you see it extremely smooth, even on this piece of tire, uh, two by four. It's extremely smooth. Normally, if you try to do this with a two by four, we all leave all splintered. So you can see that it takes a lot of advantages and you don't have to stop the operation it's so easy so fast to do it with this uh, lift and i hope you guys like it and uh we'll be able to to do some more of them so the the, the industry it doesn't want to cooperate and uh, invent something like this Anybody that needs that needs help with the elect electrical, please drop me a few questions. If you want me to uh, send me a, uh, well, we'll do that on the on the eBay, but ebook, I mean, uh, YouTube. <laughs> there you go. And we can do something on the uh, ebook and uh, on the uh, yes, ebook. There we go again on YouTube, and uh, we can. We can arrange for me to coach you how to build. Thank you very much, and uh, you can see I'll show you some other features in here, and you can see what I mean. I'll show you how to cut an arch on this on this piece of uh, two by four. There you go. Nice and very smooth. Not a problem. Can you believe what would have happened if I tried to hog all that with a little bit? Not good. So, there you go again. Fast, safe, and all reposition, no stopping and reposition the bit. That's what it's all about. Safe and fast. Save your fingers and save your time. Gonna try the same thing with a piece of plywood. See what happens. Better than the cat on the on the uh, table saw or in the band saw. Amazing. Just by going little by little, 
you don't have to hog anymore. You don't have to hog all that wood anymore because we used to hog it when we couldn't reach under the table and adjust the height or take the wood and then they have to adjust the height whatever system you have on the side, on the front, on the top or which it was worse you had to reach under the table and trying to crank that that thing up the the, the lift up so this is what I call convenience this is what I call the future so please guys try to build your own it be a lot safer and you can do a lot more in less time and safer. Thank you. Now that you see what can you do with these things and many other things that we don't have time in the video to show you. But this is the most advanced lift that you can build yourself. This is what I'm talking about. My background was in mechanical engineer and I always have an affinity for electrical work you know, and, uh, one of my hobbies I used to have a hobby till I took up uh, woodworking and I enjoy it more so I was happy to cross uh, my skills to transform it in a machine that many of you will enjoy for years so please if you have any questions drop me a note on YouTube and I'll try to answer the best I can okay thank you very much and I hope to hear for you because I want a lot of woodworkers to build a table router like this Thank you.